Hello everyone, my name is Devashesh and this is an Aid Sharpener production. The video that you are going to see is about networks and systems and uh, this is an old video but we will be putting up more such videos and if you would like to get notified, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. Enjoy the video. The first topic is networks and energy sources. This topic will build the mathematical concepts to understand the topics which are coming next. So to first understand what is a network, we must first go into what is active networks and the passive networks. The active network is completely made up of active elements. And what are active elements? Active elements are the energy providers or the energy givers such as voltage source or a current source. So the network fully made up of such elements is called as active element. Whereas you have passive elements which are energy consumers or energy storage elements such as resistance, inductor or a capacitor. You know that a capacitor stores the energy in the form of electric field. The resistance just dissipates the energy and the inductor stores the energy in the form of electromagnetic peaks. Let us see the voltage current and this passive elemental values relation between each other. According to the Ohm's law, the voltage and current are directly dependent and the constant of proportionality is nothing but the resistance R. Also, you have voltage is equal to L into di by dt in case of inductor. So basically, while the inductor is storing the energy in the form of electromagnetic flux, psi is equal to N into I and voltage can be given by d psi by dt whereas this is the psi and if you put the value of psi here you will get v is equal to d of n into i divided by dt where n is nothing but the number of turns of a coil so you get this n into di by dt is equal to v whereas you have v is equal to l di by dt so basically this inductor is nothing but the constant taken from the number of turns and the properties of the material. The next up you have capacitor wherein you have the equation Q is equal to CV where Q is nothing but the charge stored on the plates of the capacitor while some voltage is applied across it. So Q is equal to CV can be modeled as dQ by dt is equal to c dv by dt all right because v is changing that we are assuming and c is a constant which is a capacitance dq by dt is nothing but current i which can be given by i is equal to c into dv by dt let us see what are direct and dependent sources so while you solve the circuit or the unknown values of current voltage or say passive elemental value you come across such kind of diagrams or such kind of element which are direct sources and dependent source so basically direct source is nothing but a fixed value source you can just write down 10 volt maybe 20 volt or say 100 volts it won't depend on any other factor similarly for a current source you will have fixed values like 5 ampere maybe 10 amperes or maybe any 100 amperes say. but in case of dependent sources if you come across such diagrams which is shown in the diamond okay the diamond is nothing but a dependent source the values of which depend on some other variable these can be modeled as say 4 v1 and v1 will be some voltage value in the circuit v1 is again a variable and this is a current source which is again shown in a diamond you can you can have the values say like 5 i2 and i2 might be some current in the circuit now why do we have such dependent sources in circuit ultimately our objective is to find out the unknown values in a circuit maybe current maybe voltage or maybe passive elemental value so basically to solve or to find out the unknown value you must form simultaneous equations or some equations and to solve these equations you need variables the dependent sources help us forming the equations which help us finding the unknown value all right if you go further 
you have series and parallel combination of sources. So basically, in a circuit, you you might not have just one source. You might have multiple sources. And sources are of two types. One is a one is a voltage source and other is a current source. So if you have two voltage sources connected in such a manner, both the voltage sources are driving the circuit in the same direction, right? So the ultimate voltage across these two points should be the addition of these, all right? So V1 plus V2. But on the other hand, if you have the voltage sources driving in two different directions, so ultimately you will have the subtraction of these two sources on the these two elements or these two terminals so if you want to find out what voltage would appear across a and b so if a is positive and b is negative you just have to see which one of it which one of the sources aligns with this particular polarity so you have b1 which aligns with the given polarity so you keep v1 as positive and subtract v2 from it all right and if you get b positive and a negative so v2 would align with the given polarity so you would do v2 as positive and subtract v1 from it all right so i hope you have understood the series combination of voltage sources so basically series combination is done for voltage sources all right next up will be parallel combination for current sources let us check that so ultimately what does a current source do current source can be shown by such a diagram and ultimately i1 is the driving current for this current source which travels from this branch all right and the next stuff parallel to it is the i2 i2 drives the circuit for current i2 in this direction so ultimately we want to find out what current is at this point at this particular point, you have I2 plus I1. The ultimate value is I1 plus I2. So you can represent I1 and I2 parallel as I1 plus I2 like this. So if you have a parallel combination of current sources and both the currents are driving in the same direction, you will add the current sources and represent it. You can represent it with a single current source whose value is I1 plus I2. If you have I2 driving in opposite direction. So you can just negate I2 from I1. Alright. Because I1 is going in this direction. And our required direction is also aligned with the direction of I1. We would subtract I2 from I1. If my intended direction was this. I would align I2 with my intended direction. And would subtract I1 from I1. So I would get I2 minus I1 if my intended direction was this. Alright. Let us go further and see how conversion of voltage sources is done into a current source. If you have V and R. So the transformation is given as current source value is equal to V by R. And the resistance parallel to it is equal to the resistance in series with the voltage source. Similarly, if you have a current source and a resistance parallel to it, and if you need to convert it into a voltage source and a, and a resistance in series with it, what you will do? You will multiply I and R to get the value of voltage source, V is equal to I. And the resistance which is parallel to the current source would be kept in series with the formed voltage source. Alright, so let us go forward and see one of the problem. The objective of this problem is to find out the power delivered by the 30 volt source. Alright, so we need to find out how much power this 30 volt voltage source is delivering to the circuit rest of the circuit. So let us say this is I and if you find this I, you will get the power delivered. But to find this I, we must first consider the rest of the circuit. And to simplify this circuit, you can see the current source 10 ampere and this 2 ohm resistors are in parallel. At the same time, we have converted this voltage source and the resistance in series into 
a current source and a resistance in parallel. So basically, we have divided 10 volts by 3 to get 3.33 amperes current source and the, the series resistance 3 ohm is kept in parallel position with it. Alright. At the same time, 3 ohm resistor parallel with 2 ohm resistor. If you do this math, you get 1.2 ohm resistance. So now you have again a current source and a particular resistance parallel to it. We will now convert this particular source into a voltage source and a resistance in parallel. 1.2 ohm resistance and a 16 volt battery or a 16 volt source. Now you can see voltage 30 volt or this maybe V1 is driving the circuit in this particular direction and the 16 volt battery is driving the circuit in this direction. So both are acting in opposite direction and 30 volt source is larger. So whose effect would be better or whose effect will be more? The effect of 30 volts will be more. So we will consider it positive. So 30 volt minus 16 divided by total resistance in the circuit which is 5.2 ohms. And we, if we do this simple math, we get 2.69 amperes as a current which is driven in this direction. All right. So you have a current in this direction as 2.7 amperes. And to find out the power, just multiply voltage into current. So 30 multiplied by 2.7, you get 80.69 watts. I hope you have understood this problem. Thank you so much.